chapter six, problem one, we see that Wainwright Corporation has the following cash flows. Year one, $720. Year two, $930. Year three, $1,190. Year four, $1,275. These are four distinct cash flows versus in chapter five where we had one lump sum. Now we have several lump sums coming in over time. Uh, I encourage you to draw a timeline on these problems to show these uh, cash flows coming in and ask yourself, are these being discounted to the left or compounded to the right? In this case, they're discounted back to today because we're looking for present value. Present value means today. So bring these back to today. So this one we're going to bring back one year. This one we're going to bring back two years to today. The third one, three years. And the fourth one, four years. Uh, find the present value of these cash flows at 10%, 18%, and 24%. Uh, so equation is present value equals future value over 1 plus R to the T. We have to go back to chapter 5 because we do not have an annuity. We can't use any of the annuity formulas that we that were presented in chapter number 6. We have uh, present value, future value situations, so we rely on chapter 5 since these cash flows are all different. Um, so again, I would take, um, to calculate these answers, I would take $720 divided by uh, 1.1 to the first to get 658.54. Then I take 930, bring that back two years, 930 divided by 1.1 squared would give me 768.60. Take 1190 divided by 1.1 cubed to get 894.06, bring that back to today. And the 1275 I have to bring back four years, 1275 divided by 1.1 to the fourth, and I should get 870.84, add all those up, and I get 3188.05. And again, I can check these, these numbers by taking them forward. I can take, should be able to take 654.54 times 1.1 to the first and should get $720. So I can check each of these answers. Again, I'm bringing these back to today. I'm not going to read all the answers. Uh, you can do them and check them and uh, repeat them, and you'll get better and better at these. So I got to take each cash flow individually and bring them back one year, two years, three years, and four years. Again, this time I'm going to use 18% um, discount rate, and then in the last case I'm going to use 24% discount rate. Notice that as the uh, discount rate goes up from 10% to 18% to 24%, my present values go down. <clears throat> okay, the present values of these uh, starting cash flows goes down as I go across this table, and in total, notice that my totals are much smaller at 24% than they were at 10%. There are the answers to problem number one. In problem number two, we see that investment X pays $5,200 per year for eight years, 5,200, 5,200, 5,200, 5,200, and so on. So we do indeed have an annuity and we can use the annuity formulas. $5,200 a year for eight years for investment X, investment Y, pays $7,300 a year for five years. What's the present value of these cash flows, which are better at 5% discount rate and at 15% discount rate? The equation, I do have an annuity, and I want to know what these are worth today. What's the present value of these annuities today? So PVA equals C times 1 minus 1 over 1 plus R to the T, all of that over R. That will get us the present value of annuity. Or I can take each individual cash flow, 5,200 over 1.05 plus 5,200 over 1.05 squared, 5,200 over 1.05 cubed, 5,200 over 1.05 fourth, and so on, and add all those up. That takes much longer, is much more prone to error than using the compact present value annuity formula. So here's an example for the first case, $5,200 is the C for the constant cash flow. Uh, 0.05 is my uh, rate in eight years. So I plug that in. I get a present value of that annuity, $5,200 at 5%, 3360871. If I take that at 15%, that goes way down to 2333407. I do the same thing for the investment Y, $7,300 a year for five years. In this case, I'm going to put $7,300 in uh, for my constant cash amount and 0.05 in five years. Uh, in, in the case of time, and I get 3160518 is my present value of investment Y at 5% for five years, and 244773 um, for 15% discount rate. You can see uh, uh, investment X is much better at 5%. Actually, both of them are much better, but in, in the case of choosing between the investments, I, at 5% I take investment X, and at 15% I take investment Y. There are your answers to problem number two. 
In problem number three, we see that Toadies has the following cash flows, $1,375 in year one, $1,495 in year two, $1,580 in year three, and $1,630 in year number four. Uh, we want to find the future value of these cash flows. Concentrate on that FV, future value. So we want to uh, compound these out to the right. Question number one, do we have an annuity? And the answer is no. These are all different cash flows, so I must revert back to chapter number five once again to get these future values and ask ourselves, how many years will this be in the bank? Well, uh, in this first case, at the 8%, I'm going to take 1375 times 1.083 to the third to get this answer of 1732.10. Um, the, the second cash flow, 1495, I'm going to take times 1.08 squared. That will give me my answer of 1743.77. Uh, the $1,580 will be in the bank for one year, because again, we're trying to find the future value at the end of year four. So that money will be in the bank. All these deposits come in on the last day of the year. It's critical to understand, last day of the year. So this cash flow will be in the bank for one full year. And then to get 1706.40, and then the final cash flow of 1630, I'm going to multiply by 1.08 to the zero power. It will be in the bank no years. Basically, we're going to deposit that $1,630 at the end of the fourth year, so that just equals 1630. So there are my future values of all those four cash flows. I calculate them using this methodology, and um, I get a total of $6,812.27. And I'll do the same thing at 11%, except I'll just put in 1.11 in all these cases, and I'll do the same thing for 24%. In that case, I'll just put in 1.24 in all those four cases. Notice that as my interest rate goes up, uh, my compounding rate goes up, my totals go up accordingly because I'm multiplying by a much, much higher percentage in that last case. There are your answers to problem number three. In problem number four, an investment pays $6,100 a year for 15 years. $6,100, $6,100, $6,100, $6,100, $6,100, dollars continuing on for 15 years. Required return is 6%. What is the value of this investment today? If the payments continue for 15 years, for 40 years, for 75 years, and forever. Um, so again, draw this out on a timeline, 6,100, 6,100, 6,100, 15 times. We do indeed have an annuity, and we want to know what this investment is worth today. So we want to calculate the present value of that annuity. Uh, PV annuity equals C times 1 minus 1 over 1 plus R to T, all of that over R. So for C, I'm going to put in the... Uh, constant cash amount, $6,100. In the first case, for R, I'm going to put in 0 0.06, and for T, I'm going to put in 15. Uh, the present value of this annuity for 15 years is 59,244.72. If I extend that for 40 years and plug in 40 for T, everything else remaining the same, I get a present value of 91,782.41. For 75 years, I get $100,380.67, and for uh, forever, I plug a large number in there, like a million or a billion in there for T. I get uh, a number approaching 101.666.67. And if I draw this, if I plot this, these figures on an XY diagram of present value going up the Y axis and time going out the X axis, I notice that um, the curve approaches the asymptote of 101.666.67. We'll call it asymptotically. So this curve actually goes like this, and it gets ever so close to that asymptote. Um, and that will give you your present value of that annuity for 15 years, 40 years, 75 years, and forever. Again, forever, just plug in a very large number, and you'll get the present value figures that you see there for 6.4. In problem number 6.5, we have a bank putting up $45,000 today. Let's pretend that the author means a bank. It's a typical type of business that would put up $45,000 today to loan it to you. They're going to give it to you today. Uh, they're going to charge you 6.25% uh, interest. 15 year is the term of the loan. And they want to know, you want to know, going into the bank, before you go to the bank, what will your annual cash flow payment be to them? such that you can meet the terms of the loan. Um, 
you're going to get the money today. So, and we do have an annuity. So if it's the same amount each year, we have an annuity that you're going to pay back the bank. So I'm going to use the present value annuity formula. PVA equals C times 1 minus 1 over 1 plus R to the T, all of that over R. We do have an annuity and we're discounting all those cash flows that you're going to be paying back to today. So solution for PVA, I put in $45,000. For C, I put in uh, C because I'm not sure what I'm going to pay. I want to solve for C. Uh, for R, I put in 0 0.0625 and for T, I put in 15. It's a 15-year loan. Um, solve for C, I get 4709 31 annually. That's how much I'm going to pay each and every year to satisfy this loan of 45,000 bucks at 6.25% interest 15 years. Total, overall 15 years, I'm going to pay the bank back 70,639.65. And the way I got that, I simply took the annual loan payment of 4709.31 multiplied by 15. So I'm going to pay a total of $70,000 over the course of the 15 years for this $45,000 uh, loan that I'm getting today. Again, very practical use of Chapter 6 uh, time value of money problems, and these are uh, annuity problems when I have the same amount of money each year. There's your answer to problem number five. In problem number six, we have a company that will generate $68,000 in annual revenues from savings for seven years. The discount rate on these Revenues is 8.5%. What's the present value of these savings? Again, I have an annuity again. Um, 68,000, 68,000, 68,000, 68,000. Draw yourself a timeline and extend that out for seven years. Uh, discount rate 8.5%. What's the present value of these savings? So the present value of that annuity is C times 1 minus 1 over 1 plus R of the T. All of that over R. 68,000 is your constant cash amount. 8.5% is your rate discount rate and seven years is your time. I do the math and I get a present value of that, uh, those annuities of $348,058.92. There's your answer to problem number six. In problem number seven, we have a deposit of $5,000 each year for 20 years going into our account paying 10.8% interest. Um, how much will we have in 20 years? How much will we have in 40 years? Uh, I want to make this 0.108 and 0.108. So I take $5,000 times 1.108 to the 20th power minus 1. All of that divided by 0.108. Make sure you get your uh, underlying under everything there in the numerator. Uh, and I get an answer of, for 20 years, I'll have $313,736 in the bank. If I, let's say I start saving this $5,000 when I'm 45, by the time I'm 65, I'll have $313,000 at 10.8% interest rate. Now, if I start when I'm 25 and can save it for 40 years, so again, I put 5,000 in here, uh, 1.108 to the 40th power, minus one, all that over 0.108, I will have $2.753 million, 2753565598, almost $3 million. Again, start saving when you're very, very young, and you'll do very well. And this problem illustrates that. Start saving very, very young. That's your answer to problem number seven. In problem number eight, we see that you want $75,000 in your bank account in 12 years. Your account's paying 6.8% interest compounded annually. No need to do the EAR. What is your constant amount of deposit that you must put in each and every year to have that future value of $75,000? So I do have an annuity, same amount each year. I need to put in the bank. I want to know what that C is. Uh, future value annuity equals C times 1 plus R to the T minus 1. All of that over R. 75,000 is my future value. C is the constant cash amount I want to put in each month, each year, I'm sorry. 6.8% uh, is my R, 12 is my T, and I get an annual amount of C of uh, 42, 42 and 25 cents. If I put that amount in each and every year, compound it up at 6.8%, for 12 years I'll have $75,000 in the bank at the end of 12 years. There's your answer to problem number eight. 
in problem number nine, we have a de niro bank's going to give you a sixty thousand dollars loan for five years at seven and a half percent interest rate. what is the constant annual payment amount you're going to make on this seventy uh, sixty thousand dollars loan? Uh, again, I have uh, I'm going to use the bank loan formula, which is the present value annuity formula. This is like a mortgage or a loan. Uh, I'm going to get that sixty thousand dollars today. So sixty thousand goes in for PVA. C is the constant cash amount. I'm trying to figure out uh, how much I have to pay back to the bank. 0.075 is my rate, and five years is the time. Uh, the case solving for C, I get 14,829.88 is my constant cash amount each year for five years. And in total, I will pay $74,149.40 some cents for the privilege of getting this loan. For the $60,000 loan, there's my total cost I just took. 14,829.88 times 5 to figure out that total cost. And there's your answer to number 9. In problem number 10, maybe pay life insurance company pays you $30,000 a year forever. When we see the word forever, we think present value of perpetuity. Uh, what is the present value of this perpetuity at 5.8% discount rate? If I take each of those cash flows and discount them back to today to figure out what this annuity is worth today. Uh, present value of that perpetuity is C over R, a very simple problem. So $30,000 divided by 0 0.058 is my uh, discount rate. And I get a policy amount of 517,241.38. There's your answer number 10. In problem number 11, we have maybe pay life insurance policy costing $475,000 for a 30 year perpetuity. What is the percent discount rate on this policy. Uh, present value of perpetuity is C over R, so the present value of the policy is $475,000 equals the constant cash amount it's going to pay you divided by some discount rate. And uh, with these givens, I get a discount rate of 6.32%. There's your answer to number 11. For problem number 12, we're going to solve for the EAR, the effective annual rate, where we have uh, rates that are being compounded more than annually. Uh, the EAR uh, equation is the EAR percent is 1 plus the quoted rate, or the APR over m to the mth power minus 1. On the case of quarterly, we're going to uh, compound it four times. In the case of monthly, we're going to put m in there at um, 12 times. In the case of daily, let's make this an m. Uh, we're going to make M365 times, and infinitely we're going to plug in, uh, let's say, a billion, a very large number in here for M. So 9% uh, compounded quarterly works out to 9.3083%. 18% compounded monthly works out to 19.5618%. So in this example, if you have an 18% credit card, and it says in the very tiny print on the back of your credit card statement, compounded monthly, you're actually paying 19.5618% because the quoted rate or stated rate is the 18% uh, and you're compounding it monthly, which is 12, and you're going to get, you're actually paying 19.5618%. 14% compounded daily, I'm going to use 365 for M, and I'm going to get 15.0243%. And 11% compounded uh, infinitely, uh, I can use a very large number in there for M, choose your large number. Um, you're going to get approximately 11.6278%. There are your answers for problem number 12.